Good afternoon. We'll start uh, with opening statements by the Secretary General, the Foreign Minister and the High Representative, and then we'll have time for just a few questions. Secretary General. Minister Koleba uh, De Dimitro, High Representative Borrell, and Josep. It's great to see you both here at the NATO headquarters, so welcome to both of you. Um, this is a symbol of our solidarity. NATO and the European Union together standing with Ukraine. A year ago, President Putin launched his illegal war against a peaceful neighbor. The facts are clear for all to see. Nobody is attacking Russia. Russia is the aggressor. Ukraine is the victim of aggression. And we are supporting Ukraine's right to self-defense, a right which is enshrined in the UN Charter. It is President Putin who started this imperial war of conquest. It is Putin who keeps escalating the war. He thought he could destroy Ukraine and divide us, but he underestimated the determination of the Ukrainian people to defend their homeland, and he underestimated our unity. One year since he launched uh, the Russian invasion, we see no sign that President Putin is preparing for peace. On the contrary, as he made clear today, he is preparing for more war. Russia is launching new offensives, mobilizing more troops, and reaching out to North Korea and Iran. We are also increasingly concerned that China may be planning to provide lethal support uh, for Russia's war. Putin must not win. That would show that aggression works and force is rewarded. It will be dangerous for our own security and for the whole world. So we must sustain and step up our support for Ukraine. We must give Ukraine what they need to win and prevail as a sovereign independent nation in Europe. I welcome the recent announcements by allies uh, on new tanks, heavy weaponry and training for Ukrainian troops. It is urgent to deliver on all these pledges. This has become a grinding war of attrition, a battle of logistics. And key capabilities must, must reach Ukraine before Russia can seize the momentum. So, for Minister Koleba, uh, High Representative Borrell and I uh, discussed the need to ramp up production and improve our procurement systems to continue supporting Ukraine. Upon Ukraine's request, we have uh, agreed uh, that NATO should assist Ukraine to develop uh, a procurement system that is effective, transparent and accountable. We have also agreed today to convene a meeting of NATO, EU and Ukrainian procurement experts to see what more we can do together to ensure Ukraine has the weapons it needs. In NATO, we have been working on ramping up production for many months. NATO sets the standards for ammunition and equipment for all allies. We have completed an extraordinary survey of ammunition stockpiles. <clears throat> we met <clears throat> with defense industry last fall and continue to engage uh, with them. And we will increase our targets for munition stockpiles through the NATO defense planning process. This will also help um, give defense industry the long-term uh, demand and contracts they need to invest and produce more. NATO has uh, had joint procurement among allies for many years. I also commend the European Union for their efforts to incentivize greater production and NATO is prepared to work with the EU on this going forward. We have seen a pattern of Russian aggression over many years. Georgia, 2008, Crimea and Donbas, 2014, and the full-fledged invasion last year. We must make clear that Ukraine's future is within the Euro-Atlantic family. When the war ends, we need to put in place long-term arrangements for Ukraine's security to ensure that Russia does not continue to chip away at European security. 
and to break the cycle of Russian aggression. So NATO will continue to stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. And we will continue to work closely with the European Union to support you. Let me conclude with this. I regret today's decision by Russia to suspend its participation in the new START treaty. Over the last years, Russia has violated and walked away from key arms control agreements. With today's decision on new START, the whole arms control architecture has been dismantled. I strongly encourage Russia to reconsider its decision and to respect existing agreements. And with that, I give the floor to you, Dimitro, please. Thank you. Dear Secretary General, dear Jens, dear High Representative, dear Josep, today we held the first high-level meeting in this new trilateral format between Ukraine, NATO, and the European Union. I think it was helpful. I think we all agree it was helpful. It was important to address most pressing security needs. I uh, enjoyed sitting down in this trilateral format, and though, although this is the first meeting that we held in this format, I already begin to regret that it will cease to exist when Ukraine will become members of both NATO and the EU. <coughs> but between now and then, <coughs> we agreed to work intensively to answer three questions. How to train most effectively, how to produce and procure weapons and ammunition most effectively, and how to deliver all of this to the battlefield in the most effective manner. We have to be aware of the fact that since February 2022, Ukraine and its closest partners are implementing probably the largest logistical operation since Second World War. And behind big political decisions and statements, there are millions of issues that need to be resolved. And the more coordinated we get, the sooner Ukrainian army will kick off Russian army from the territory of Ukraine, and the sooner peace in Euro-Atlantic space will be restored. This is the reason why we are standing here today. So on trainings, I thanked both the European Union and allies for their training programs. They're very efficient. And of course, I raised the issue of training, uh, of uh, launching trainings for Ukrainian pilots. Uh, on procurement and on production and procurement, we had a very in-depth discussion on that. Time has come for uh, senior diplomats and officials to get into some details of production and procurement to, be, uh, to build uh, the most efficient mechanism. And therefore, as Jens already mentioned, I appreciate that we agreed to establish a working level contact mechanism, focal points to resolve issues related to production of armaments and ammunition and cooperation between, uh, and streamlined cooperation between producers, contractors, and beneficiaries. This is the triangle where things have to be smoothed and streamlined, and then everything will begin to work efficiently. The capacity to produce is there. The capacity to deliver is there. So we need coordination, coordination to deliver. And this is what, uh, uh, what, we, what we discussed today. I also asked Jens to um, uh, schedule the next annual industry forum that NATO holds as soon as possible, to hold it somewhere in spring, to bring together all defense industries, including Ukrainian defense industries, so that they connect, they, uh, they meet with each other, and they build synergies and, and cooperation. Um, finally, yes, and the last point was production and uh, trainings, production, delivery. Huh? Deliveries, yes, yes. And logistics, and, and we dedicated a lot of time to, to logistics. <clears throat> um, the Ukraine-EU NATO format will uh, keep working on a regular basis. There are many issues that need to be explored and, and resolved. Um, we appreciate that the Secretary General uh, will be working on helping us with building our ne effective national procurement system. 
And we will be moving forward with one goal, to end this war as soon as possible with the victory of Ukraine, which is unavoidable. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitro. Josep, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Let me start by stressing the historical nature of this, uh, this meeting. The, the three of us standing here today, Ukraine, NATO, and the European Union, standing here today for the first time in this constellation of three, it's a clear demonstration of our unity to continue supporting Ukraine, for the purpose of supporting Ukraine. We have done it since day one. Since the first day of the Russia invasion against Ukraine, the European Union and NATO have been standing together, not only in condemning, not only in the worst, in the strongest terms, the Russia aggression, but uh, working together in order to provide Ukraine with the capacity to defend itself. And today we are reaffirm the unwavering support to Ukrainians' territorial integrity and its right to self-defense. Our resolve has been stronger from the beginning, and we will continue doing so. And I think that today's discussion has been crucial to coordinate the key word that uh, Kuleva has said, to coordinate, speed up, and increase our support. It is necessary in order to make the rule of law prevail over the rule of the gun, the rule of the force. And it is the only way that Ukraine can win this war, to speed up, to increase, to coordinate better our support. Because uh, we are facing a situation where the war is showing its awful face with bombing of hospitals, starving entire cities to death, that's what Russia is doing, instead of uh, taking a step towards a ceasefire, which is something that we are asking for. Remember, Russia is a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. Russia is a nuclear power. And in spite of that, it has violated this charter, invading a peaceful neighbor. And in line with United Nations Charter, Ukraine has the sovereign right to defend itself against this unfounded aggression. And the international community, we have the right to support it. To support the aggressor is not in accordance with the United Nations Charter. To support the aggressed, it is perfectly legitimate. And Ukraine needs all the support we can provide, starting with weapons and ammunition. They didn't. They need them more than ever. And we are looking for the ways to accelerate the deliveries from member states and to Ukraine. For that, we have a tool, the European Peace Facility, which has been working since the beginning, since day one. And altogether, member states and the European institutions has provided more than 12 billion worth of weapons and related supplies to Ukraine. We have been launching a great training program that will train about 30,000 Ukrainian soldiers by the end of the year. But it's still not enough. We have to accelerate our military support to Ukraine. Today, especially ammunition, tomorrow <clears throat> with other kind of arms, in order to fulfill all your needs. And I think this meeting will provide us with a better coordination procedures in order to continue doing that in a united and efficient manner. Thank you.